Hey folks, and welcome back to the Witchcraft SMP. As always, I am your host Elsewhere, uh, and today, to start off, I have a lot of bad news uh, and a little bit of kind of fun news. So let's get down to it. Uh, the first thing is that at the end of the last stream, uh, I said that I was going to, after, after it finished, I was going to assemble a Void Bramble and then use it to blackmail the uh, Baron of Uberwald to let go his Hobgoblin slaves. Uh, turns out, Void Brambles do not work in Stragaria. They are disabled. So that strategy is uh, off. I'm working on figuring out another one. Uh, I, I don't know what it is. Maybe it has to do with the old apocalypse. Maybe it's due to the fact that we've killed the last Void Dragon. I don't know. Um, but I'll, I'll work on an alternative solution. The other thing uh, is that I realized summoning Mog and Gulg actually kills nearby hobgoblins, presumably the ones they're, they're taking the forms uh, to use as avatars. So absolutely do not do this. Um... <laughs> Uh, if you care at all about the safety of your uh, hobgoblins, uh, at which I do, so that method of acquiring uh, koboldite has gone immediately off the table. Fortunately, I found an alternative. Uh, you all remember Puck, uh, one of the hobgoblins who's been around for as long as the server, as long as I've had Goblin Town, pretty much. Um, I discovered through a bunch of trading with him that he could actually, every cycle of his trades would give me a net benefit of koboldite. So with enough wool and fish, um, you know, feeding and clothing the, the people of Goblin Town, I could acquire an unlimited amount of koboldite. Unfortunately, um, I mean, he set up this shop. It was very nice. You see his cow is still there. Uh, unfortunately, he was murdered. So, I'm not thrilled about that for a lot of reasons, obviously one of which is that Koboldite is a misery to acquire and having infinite was really great, but the main reason is that Puck's been around for the entirety of Goblin Town, so uh, him being dead is very upsetting, um, and yeah, there will be retribution for that if I can figure out exactly what happened. Uh, as, as some small consolation, I was able to acquire just enough koboldite to build the pentacle uh, that we were trying so hard to make, um, but it's kind of a hollow victory, especially considering how many pentacles I was originally planning on making. Um, so in honor of Puck, we will finish the first pentacle and we'll put it on our altar at home, but suffice it to say, I'm not thrilled, weird things are happening, uh, and I'll hopefully eventually get to the bottom of it. Uh, so let's really quickly put this together. What are you doing here? One, two, three, four. I think this is the layout. Yes. Oh, this pentacle has been like a year in the making. <laughs> I'm so, uh, I wish I weren't upset. I wish this were just a, a happy uh, success story because this is this pentacle is one of the most difficult things to acquire in all of witchery, and it's extremely satisfying to have. Ah, oh, look at it! Oh, it's glorious. Okay. Well, with that long time objective checked off, uh, oh, there is one kind of nice thing, uh, one you know little thing that I can I can show. Uh, I, the hobgoblins have been teaching me how to make, uh, fancier storage objects. Um, so now that, now that we have these on the server, uh, you might see me updating, uh, some of the, the areas around Greenmount and the valley and my home and everything with these nice fancier versions. Um, this is the, the Bibliocraft mod for those who aren't aware. Uh, so I'm, I'm very excited to, to get to that. And actually speaking of that, let me really quickly, I'm going to put together a bookcase to bring home with us. Yeah, I think it's this. Yes. So now we have storage for our, um, uh, books of witchery. <sighs> However, 
Obviously, there are strange things afoot, Puck's death, the general threats, the slavery of hobgoblins, the... I've even been hearing these weird whispers of some kind of revolution going on in New Desertlandia and, and Uberwald, I don't know, but the server is clearly getting dangerous. So, it's about time I do started doing a better job of protecting my territory and preparing in case, you know, more threats come against my people. So, we're gonna fly on home, uh, and the best way in witchery to protect yourself aside from the uh, sentinel fetishes, which we've discussed before and we'll discuss again, um, is necromancy. And actually, fetishes are part of necromancy, so that actually falls under the, the same category. Uh, so today, we are going to start making an army of the undead. And this is something I'm going to be working on for several streams, because there are a lot of subdivisions of necromancy in witchery uh, that you can really get into. Uh, and so the first that we're going to do the most basic. We are going to raise corpses, uh, and we're going to put armor and weapons on them and, you know, turn them into an army. That's our first objective and the main objective for today. Uh, right off the bat, we're going we're gonna to resummon my familiar because Salem hasn't been around in a little while <laughs> because I kept dying or taking damage. And since she's my familiar, she takes some of the damage, etc., etc. So we're going to grab her back really quickly. Oh, first, first. So currently, my altar is 12,306 at a times six regeneration rate. I'm gonna slap this down right in the middle, and we now have a times 12 altar regeneration. It's gonna go back twice as fast. Ah! Oh, that's going to make brewing so much easier. Oh man, okay. I'm excited. I'm excited about that. Let's go. What's our prophecy? Inundated by iron. Okay. Do, do, do. Uh, yes, right. Current projects. Let's grab out these three. And we'll slap our bookcase down. Why not there? Put all our books in it. Ah, how exciting. Oh, that's so much fun. Okay. So you right, you can right click to put them in but you have to actually open it to take them out. Fun, okay, hang on. Put all of the books in. Let's see. Keep the conjuration, the witch's bruise, and circle magic. Speaking of circle magic, we are about to do the rite of summoning, which I guess is up here. Where is the right of summoning? Oh, here we go. Under demonics, naturally. Summon the familiar that's been dismissed or killed. We need an 11 by 11 circle uh, and the three whiffs that I already, the three fumes I already have. Uh, we have 11 by 11 here, so let's just pop, pop, pop. Return to me, O cat of mine. Hello, welcome back. Normally I just sit you down. Where are you going? Normally I just sit you down and let you do whatever, but I guess uh, we'll try something different. We'll have you come around with us. Probably means you're gonna get killed and I'm gonna have to summon you back again, but such is life. Hi, Ambra. Or, nope, sorry, Demonica. I'm so sorry, forgive me. You, you and your sister look very similar. Okay, next step on the list. Right, the necromancer's stones. So there is a, the core part of necromancy uh, is the creation of multiple, here's the necromancy page, by the way, necromancy and curses. Um, but we're gonna focus on necromancy right now. We're gonna wait on curses until somebody actually performs aggression against us. Although to be fair, putting a waystone in the middle of a house that's supposed to be protected by evil spirits uh, could be construed as aggression. So we'll consider, we'll, we'll think about that. Um, let's drop this in. Speaking of the Baron, we are still going to be working on his uh, order for some sentinel fetishes of his own. 
uh, like the ones that I have planted around my home. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna see what we can do about that. Uh, that'll be probably a couple streams from now because there's a lot of necromancy to get through before we get to the advanced parts, which fetish binding is one of. All right, so a necromancer's stone. The right of necromancy creates a necromantic stone. Perform at night. It is the sun is currently setting. I think unless it's rising. Nope, that's setting. Perfect. Uh, we'll need an attuned stone, bone, rotten flesh, wood ash, an iron sword, and spectral dust. Spectral dust definitely being... Spectral dust and the attuned stone are the expensive parts of this. The rest is fairly manageable. Uh, and as you can see, I've got a setup already. So let's grab these. If only swords stacked. Uh, spectral dust, I'm sure I've been over before, but you can get it by killing undead with an Arthana, uh, like this one, or by trading with undead, which is actually something we're going to discuss in a moment. So, that's the wrong book, or not book. We need a 7x7, seven seven, which we have right here. We need knight, and we need this. 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, I don't think the coven does anything for this, but I'm going to bring them in anyway so that we can just have a fun time <laughs> making a necromantic stone. Hello, everyone. It's good to see you all. Marvelous. All right, our first necromantic stone. Uh, and now this can be used for a variety of purposes. Uh, while it's still night, I'm going to make the other two that I need to make for reasons that you will see shortly. Um, might as well. It's more fun with friends. Hello. Hello, everyone. Um, because the necromantic stone is also the foundation for everything else that you do with necromancy, including most of the other relevant items. So we're going to be making a lot of necromantic stones this season as we create various necromancy-related tools. All right, that's everything. Coming in. Poof. Marvelous. All right. Now let's uh, take our necromantic stone for a test drive. It's night, so there should be some undead hanging around outside Green Mount. If I can find, aha! You are undead. Uh, you are also not supposed to be in this dimension. Um, somewhere around here, surely. Really? Nothing? Nothing at all? It's completely, completely empty wasteland? Come on. I mean, I can summon some myself, that's the point of this, but I wanted to demonstrate. Well... I guess I can use the Pigman. So the Pigman already has uh, mind control particles on it, as you may have noticed, because I have already mind controlled it with my witch's hand. Uh, but we can still show off. Oh, this one. I Hell, how many of you are down there? Well, here. If I right click. They should, can they exit? Unclear. There we go. If you right click with the necromantic stone, any mind controlled undead will move to that spot. If you do it on an enemy, uh, then they will attack that enemy. I, Salem, I worry about you being out here with me. Um, you can also uh, they, 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 uh, you can also cre make things mind controlled. So these particles are the same ones that you get from using the witch's hand uh, to mind control something, and it's got the same um, uh, movement effect. Specifically, if you have the infernal fusion, like I have, uh, so you can, if you are doing necromancy, you can either use a necromantic stone or you can use a witch's hand with the infernal fusion. Uh, they will attack enemies that you tell them to attack. 
uh, or who attack you. Uh, and basically, it's a nice little way to start building an army. However, I'm not interested in ordinary undead. I want to make fancy ones that are stronger because obviously the people on the server are quite strong and if they happen to menace us, we want enough undead that are good enough that they'll actually deal some damage. So, we are going to be creating our own undead today. And the first step in this process is going to be to make a necromantic robe. So we're going to need one of our necromancer stones. Uh, nope, that's the wrong robe. That's the right robe. Uh, we're going to need this golden thread, and then we're going to need this impregnated leather. The same stuff that normal witches' robes are made out of. Keeps the undead at bay. Undead will generally ignore the wearer, and it has an extra chance of a second necromantic brew. So the normal witches' robes... Uh, Creepers ignore you, and you have a chance of any non-necromantic brew. Uh, this, on the other hand, uh, covers specifically the brew of raising. Uh, but we also, in here, protection for unbreaking three. Yeah, this is it. Also going to gear up our suit. My anvil's almost broken. Oh, no. Okay, grab that. Grab that that now, let's see what do we what do we call you i should have planned a name beforehand um let's uh, let's see now there are a few easy ones Go. I have unlimited experience, so if I need to rename it later, I always can. Yeah, this is a good working title. All right. Swap it out. See, it's got slightly fancier uh, shoulder pads. Um, and now we have a, a protection for unbreaking three... Uh, Necromancer's Cloak. The other thing that we're going to want to make, and this isn't actually necessary for, you know, zombies and skeletons, quote-unquote, ordinary undead, um, but it is going to be useful a bit later on uh, for some of the other undead we'll be working in, the spectral undead. So we are going to toss all of that in and get ourselves a pair of earmuffs. Oh, I forgot the enchantment. And there is a max helmet enchantment for, for our earmuffs, which are not good armor, but which I figured I might as well max out since we're going to be using them. Oh, right. Experience. Let's go pay a visit to the experience farm. Down, down into the depths of the earth. Why do I have a block of dirt in my inventory? I don't remember picking that up. Oh, well. Oh, right, I broke it to, to let the zombies out. Oh, man, I need to do something about this staircase. It's a nightmare to go down. Put that away. Harvesting the berries. Salem, no, 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 no. This is why I don't take you anywhere. Get, get out of, you're gonna die. Cat. Swear to God, okay. Your privileges of not being forced to sit at home are revoked. Get up here. Come on. There, sit, stay. Fish are very valuable, so I hope you appreciate this. There you go. Hopefully that restored some of the health. You're staying in the house now. I will not have you dying constantly. And now I bonk my head on the cave wall about a hundred times. Is 
really. I did not have much foresight when I built this. Although, to be fair, I don't have much foresight ever, so that's not particularly unusual. Uh, it's very dark, but there are some on the back wall. Hang on. There you are. Okay, is that everything? All right, let's shut that down. Some more berries back in and eat some essence berries. It said 28, but we're gonna have to go higher in order to name them. So we might as well just eat them all. Hopefully that's enough. I'll bring these just in case. Woo! Much easier to go up than it was to go down. All right. Let's see, my mind is furiously trying to think of a name for the earmuffs. Let's see. The first thing that comes to mind is obviously Odysseus filling his ears with candle wax to avoid hearing the sirens. Hmm. Let's call you. Oh, wow. Okay. It was, it was more than I thought. Hang on. 35. There we go. Let's go with... There, I like that. Protection 4, Unbreaking 3, Respiration 3, Aqua Affinity. The worst thing to invest that much experience into. But nobody can stop me. All right. Now, let's swap out our outfit. And we are now pre fully prepared to go chat up some undead. Let me toss the dirt in here and grab my Polynesia charm. So as I'm, we've definitely discussed before, uh, you can use the Polynesia charm. Oh, okay, it's daytime. All the undead are going to be dead. Shoot. Uh, you can use the Polynesia charm to trade with animals and get good things from them. However, when you are wearing uh, one of the robes, with something that thinks you're, makes you think makes it think you're friendly, you can trade with it. So anything that's not hostile to you can be the recipient of a Polynesia charm. For example, currently I am wearing the Death Shroud, so I can trade with Undead. As you can see here, uh, they this the zombie pigman perhaps unsurprisingly trades for gold, bones for gold, which is a good rate. Uh, but what we really want is Spectral Dust. This is to my understanding, probably the most efficient way to obtain Spectral Dust, because even within Arthana, the drop rate is pretty low. Are there any undead surviving down in here? No. All right, that's fine. We can we can cover this later with the ones that we summon. Um, I've had the most success, I think, trading with uh, skeletons. They often trade for bones, which is I could not explain to you why. Uh, but they will trade Spectral Dust for Bones, which is really an incredible deal. Uh, since Spectral Dust is necessary, obviously for making the necromantic um, stones themselves, which in turn are part of everything else, but also for a bunch of conjurations, um, 
a whole a whole host of of different things um so let's pop back in here we'll wait for it to become night and also for us to summon a few uh, also, uh, as a fun side effect, the earmuffs, uh, as it says, protection from mandrakes. We're wearing them because they're protection from banshees, but they do also allow you to break mandrakes during the day without becoming nauseated by their screaming. Because as you can probably tell, we cannot hear the screaming. Will you, will you get out of the way? I'm trying to, I'm trying to harvest. Really need to grab a hoe. <laughs> I've accidentally trodden on a bunch of this plot okay you are all just an absolute menace enough 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 perish I have I have need of you okay replant that grab a hoe Surely there's one in here. Yes, hello. There are my mandrake seeds. There they are. Good to go. So yes, I actually recommend uh, getting some uh, he uh, earmuffs very early on because I initially harvested mandrakes without knowing about them and it was always very frustrating. So they're a nice, a nice little tool. And as you saw, five leather, two wool. They're quite cheap to make um, if you don't, you know, maximally enchant them like I just did. But you know, I can, I can afford to do that. I have a bunch of armor protection poppets, so my armor never really runs out. We'll pop in here. However, as you may notice, the death protection poppets I made are gone. Uh, I got caught in a few uh, unexpected combat encounters. Uh, so I've replenished my armor poppets, but I haven't quite spent the time and energy to make new death protection poppets. I need to get on that. I should also probably have a poppet protection poppet to protect my voodoo protection poppet. But then again, I'm the most likely person on the server to do voodoo, so I don't really know. We'll see. Everything could change with this mysterious revolution. Uh, put the mandrake away. Put the iron hoe away. And we will move on to the next step in our process. I keep... Uh, actually, no. Never mind. I'm not quite going... Yes, yes. Okay, next step. Next step is we are going to actually make some undead. Um, so for starters, we need the brew of raising. And this is the brew that's affected by the uh, death shrouds extra chance. There it is. Uh, wool of bat, oil of vitriol, which is made with foul fume and quick lime. Quick lime is wood ash. Foul fume is just oak wood in the oven. Uh, mutandus, bone, redstone, rotten flesh. Super easy, except for the wool of bat, which is a pretty valuable and uh, somewhat difficult to acquire resource. So that's the, the main investment we're making here if we use this brew. Uh, fortunately, I have a way around that that I'm going to show you momentarily. However, we're gonna, for now, grab these. We're gonna grab some glass bottles and we're gonna go over to the kettle. Uh, there's my brew of endless water. Kettle is on. Wool, oil, mutandus, bone, redstone, rotten flesh. And there we go, success. We are gonna put this Back on for a second just to maximize our, our kettle brews. And there we go. I did not get the chance of extra brews. Oh well. Put that on there. Swap back for my earmuffs. Just because I, I like the look. 
but as you can probably see, uh, since it's not impregnated leather, I'm not getting my maximum bark growth from the, the belt. But that's okay. I'm not planning on getting into any fights at the moment. Uh, all right, so the Brew of Raising, what does it do? What it does is about to become relevant as it becomes night again. This is the first and the simplest way to acquire undead minions. All you have to do is toss it at the ground, which I'll do as soon as I have ground to toss it at. Bop. And voila! It will generate an undead. They will claw their way out of the ground, break the block that you, you threw it at. Um, this one spawned with an enchanted bow. How lovely. Uh, and as you can see, they start with mind control particles on them. You already have dominion over them. If you grab your necromantic stone, you can tell them, go here, go here. Um, what's up? Uh, so as let's grab the others, see what else we can make. Ah, ooh, this one made two. That's lucky. Uh, another two skeletons. This one came with armor and a, a hat, which means he'll actually survive the dawn. Let's make one more. Oh, and we got a zombie. Nice trifecta. So this is a fun brew. Uh, it's useful and obviously you can control these you can order them to attack enemies if any enemies would spawn I would I guess okay this poor cow has to be the test subject come my minions come to me yes good good come here and then this cow I right-click and they attack, and then they shoot each other because skeletons are idiots. The cow is running away. I'm sorry, cow, but your leather will be put to good use. Oh, great, and now they're fighting. Skeletons are a hassle. <laughs> okay, you're a worse one, so you, you just go away. Okay, much better. Uh, anyway. Now we can also trade with them. Now, if I take off my uh, necromantic robes, they still won't attack me because they are mind controlled. They belong to me. However, uh, I'm gonna keep them on in case any others spawn that we then wanna take control of. So I will chat him up. He also is trading for gold. Let's go see about this skeleton, see if they happen to have some spectral dust. Do you have spectral dust? No, you trade 25 bones for four bones. You, I'm, I don't think you understand um, economy particularly well, but that can be excused. You are a dead corpse reanimated by magic. Um, I'm, I'm sorry to say I won't be taking your deal. <laughs> but we'll be making a few more of them later, and maybe one of them will have a good trade. <laughs> So that's the brew of raising, and it's fine. Oh, hello, actually, let's check your trades first. Bone for gold, still an extremely good trade. In fact, we're gonna, as I explain the next bit, we are going to grab some bones and we're gonna trade with them. Uh, first, let me replenish my energy. Getting a little low. Uh, so obviously the brew of raising, it's fine, but it only makes one, maybe two if you're lucky. Uh, and they're, you know, decent. But maybe you want a better rate than that. Maybe you want to make more of them at a time. Maybe you want to, uh, you know, use it in a way, because these have to be launched at the top of a block, which they then destroy. So maybe you want to be able to summon some undead without damaging the landscape, perhaps. Um, in order to do that, we are going to turn to custom brewing. Uh, bones. Bones are in here. I think they were both for 11, so 22, and let's drop off the cow bits. Sorry, cow. You were a necessary test subject. This is the way. Uh, so the we're going to make a custom brew, because raising is one of the effects available in custom brewing, and unlike this one, it doesn't destroy the block you launch it at. Uh, which means you can use it even if you're doing battle in other people's builds without fear of destroying anything significant. Um, hi. Hi. 
Come back here. Yes. I accept your deal. Oh, you... Uh, no, yeah, that's, that's, hey, hey. You know I'm gonna have to kill you now. I need those. Give me my 11 bones back. Where are my 11 bones? Oh, there they are. Okay. And the other one... Where'd he go? Oh, this one, this one was trading for bones, too. I guess we can toss it in. As you saw, the Polynesia charm... Excuse me? What? What did I do to upset you? I'm wearing... I'm wearing a necromancer's robes! You're, you, you have my mind control part. Oh, he was close enough when I did Carnosa DM. So he perceives me as hurting myself, so he's going to kill me to protect me. Uh, yeah, so anyone who's using Carnosa DM... <laughs> Don't do it around your undead minions, or any of your minions. I've had dogs try to attack me before, too. It's a little frustrating, but these are the prices we pay for unlimited infusion power. Alright, well, we'll be we'll we'll trade with you all later. I'll acquire additional Oh, hello. Did I spawn you or yeah, I spawned you already. I want to demonstrate the new ones, but no new ones are spawning. Hmm. Find an opportunity at some point. In the meantime, let's plop down here. We'll keep the bones on us in case anybody has a nice trade. Uh, but we'll toss the gold into our ore's chest. Okay. All right, so the custom brew. I have the recipe in here already. This is not a max level one. I am going to do a brewing with witchery episode on this, which it reminds me I still have not ep uploaded. I have like four of them recorded already. I keep forgetting to upload, so I, I'll get around to that. Um, grab that. Let's put some of this stuff away in my knapsack because it is taking up too much space. We'll need you, though. Okay. These over here. Grab the splash and then this. Marvelous. Okay. So, pretty standard custom brew here. Um, these two are capacity, so four capacity, and then I'm upgrading. This is a cheap brew, so I'm only upgrading it to level three on power and duration. And then the effect here is the bone, which, as a level four effect, gives us raise dead for 2,000 altar power. So this one's no joke. We're gonna get to see our, our new pentacle in action. Summons undead creatures to assist the summoner. You bet it does. Votan. Or you're not Votan, that's Votan. I don't know which one you are. Gotta get a name for you. These dogs keep spawning, I, I don't know why. Uh, perhaps they are a gift from the lady of the spirit world, but I her gifts tend to be a little bit dubious and slightly concerning so hopefully they won't murder me at some point or worse worse can definitely happen on this server all right anyway uh let's put in our capacity power duration what why am i upgrading duration this is this is an instantaneous effect i'm a fool I, well i've already thrown in the redstone i might as well put in the obsidian uh, so for yours, the redstone and the obsidian are not necessary. Raise dead is a, a an instantaneous effect. It does not require uh, lasting. And then we'll throw in the bone. Okay, this is officially a brew of necromancy. Uh, I could bottle it, but I don't know that drinking would do anything. So we are going to put a dispersal effect on it, specifically splash. Now I could add extent or lingering to this, but neither of those really matter for splash. Uh, extent does... A little bit to an extent you could say um, yeah hey why not well we'll put extent on it so just to make sure if, uh, dispersal yeah extent is the wood ash and the cocoa so fine wood ash cocoa and then gunpowder for splash and let's uh, give ourselves a little. No, oh, that's the wrong one. 
this way. I always get uh, Accio and Kalem confused. All right, we've got our brewing expertise. Let's bottle. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, we're out of altar power. Oh, but look at that recharge rate. That's glorious. Was that 80? 80 altar power per tick? Oh, man. I can get behind that. That's nice. That is very, very nice. All right. And there we go. We've got our five splash brews of raising. Only five. That's interesting. I guess this is a higher level brew than some of the ones I've made recently. I've gotten used to getting 10. Uh, all right. Splash three, raising three. Uh, yeah, as you can see, the duration didn't show up on there. Uh, because duration doesn't matter for, for an instantaneous effect. So I'm going to go quickly revise the recipe here for the latter ones. This redstone is unnecessary. This obsidian is unnecessary. Drop that. Um, belladonna and lapis will actually be relevant for the next one. But we need to replace our wood ash and our cocoa. All right, so this brew we've just created, let's pop it into our flex slot. And we'll leave the others here. It's raining, so the undead won't die immediately. Uh, and we can test out our splash brew of raising. Let's see, it's going to be up. Left, down, down, right, pew. Ta-da! And we spawned a zombie pigman and a zombie. Let's do it again. Taking a moderate chunk of our infusion power, but not terrible. And it spawns three at a time. It doesn't damage the landscape. Uh, we're getting zombie pigmen, which is lots of fun. Let's see if they have anything nice to give us. Aha! Perfect! We have found a spectral dust trade. So, as, as mentioned, they tend to only have one trade available, and they will never re refill it, but that is okay. You took the bones again. What is it with these guys? Ah, you can have them. Uh, spectral dust the most valuable uh, necromantic resource. Um, after we, we make, we're gonna make a bunch more later today and I'll probably spend a bit of time after the stream going through with my Polynesia charm and just trading with all of them to get as much spectral dust and gold as I can. Bop. All right, put that back away. And now let's make, let's actually drop off our spectral dust and then 17, not bad. We are going to make a much better brew of raising. The splash one does a couple. It's a one-off. It's nice. It's fast. Relatively cheap altar power. However, if you use the liquid dispersal, it is an ongoing effect. Now, like gas and liquid, I've discussed this before both in the main series and in Brewing with Witchery, um, gas and liquid trigger the effect every tick if it's instantaneous gas i haven't found works with uh at least not particularly well with um raising liquid on the other hand is fantastic and we are going to see that momentarily capacity four level three power raising dispersal three ex uh, lingering, oh, sorry, extend three, lingering three, and then wormwood. Oh, that's a nice necromantic color. I love a deep purple. We still got our brewing expertise up. How's our altar power doing? It's full already. Oh, 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 this pentacle is revolutionary. I'm so upset that Puck had to die for me to get it. Oh, I will avenge him. That's why we're making armies. Okay, it's got to recharge to get the last one out. Go 
Come on, chop chop. You can see here we have our liquid brew of raising, liquid three, linger three. There we go, and that's the last one. Pop on up. And we will drop off the rest of them. We'll keep one around. Should really start using the brew bags to organize more, but I am not an organized person. Could you tell from my house? <laughs> uh, okay. Oh, let's put the glass bottles away too. We won't be needing those again. Now, we're gonna show off the liquid brew in a minute uh, once we get to our destination. Uh, but for the me in the meantime, we'll just pop that out as well. Uh, there are a couple other basic necromantic things that I wanna check out before we go. Uh, one of which is graveyard dirt. So you can see down here I've got dirt, rotten flesh, and bone meal. If you combine these three things, I think it's shapeless, yeah, it's shapeless crafting, so you can put them anywhere. Uh, you get graveyard soil, which heals undead when they step on it. So I'm gonna make some, and I've got an extra one here. Uh, it doesn't have any adverse effect on living people like me, but if you were a vampire, uh, if you as a player were a vampire, or if you had an infused brew of the grave, which is something that you know we'll discuss in a little while, um, next stream probably, uh, then it will benefit you as well as your minions. There's no real way to demonstrate this, but... Oh, sorry. That wasn't the plan. There we go. Oh, that wasn't the plan either. Now you're... Bo oh, Ball, that was not... <sighs> Thanks, Ball. See, this is the problem with having creatures bound to you that you, you punch something once, even by accident, and they're like, I must murder it! You can get out of the hole now. Gonna get out of the hole? You like it in the hole? Okay, I'll leave you in the hole. <laughs> we'll show off the graveyard dirt in a little bit. Um, but here, this is this is just what it looks like. It's textured the same on all sides. It's it's not pretty. Grass and other plants don't grow on Well, grass doesn't grow on it. Let's see if other plants grow on it. Other plants do not grow on it. So... It's also a, a bit difficult to break by hand. I have a uh, maxed out redstone gloves on and I'm, this is a, still taking a minute. Uh, but yeah, basically if you are undead or you have a uh, society built using the undead, uh, you may want to fill in some graveyard soil to use as roads or, or beside the roads or whatever, um, or where you keep your undead minions to keep them healed. Uh, I don't actually know if this heals spirits as well we will find out when we summon spirits in a couple streams or next stream depending on how fast everything goes all right we've got the graveyard soil we've got the brews um yes the alluring skull i've got a whole checklist of exciting things i want to show you all so don't mind me as i check it all right the alluring skull we've got the recipe right here let's pull it up there so it can be made with either the normal skeleton skull or wither skeleton skull I've tested and they look the same so there's no reason to to choose one over the other um, except that if you're not using tinkers construct skeleton skulls can actually be a little tough to get you might have a chance of getting them with an Arthana so wither skulls might actually be the way to go um, but since we have tinkers I'm going to use the much less valuable skeleton skull in order to make mine. It also requires a voodoo poppet. We've done poppets before on here. We'll do them again. Uh, here's the basic poppet structure, and then voodoo is uh, fermented spider eye, mandrake root, belladonna, and exhale of the horned one. And last but certainly not least, our spare necromantic stone, and voila, we have an alluring skull pop on out to give it a test. So the Alluring Skull is an interesting little device. Its purpose is to draw undead in. It serves, it's interesting to them. It attracts nearby undead. And fortunately the sun is going down so we may have a chance to show it off. So let's pop it here. This seems like a nice place. Currently it is inactive. 
You can see the necromantic stone in its head is not glowing. However, if we right click it with a necromantic stone, the lights go up, the, the, the eye sockets glow, uh, and it will now attract nearby undead on the condition that there is nothing more interesting. So if there's another player nearby, or if they're commanded to do something, the undead will break off and will, uh, you know, go attack that instead. Um, but aside from that, it will, it will cause undead to collect. So if you want to just set this out, uh, and then, you know, at, at partway through the night, head out, the undead will all be gathered around here and you can easily poke them all with your necromantic stone or with your infernal witch's hand, uh, in order to add them to your growing army. But undead don't seem to be spawning around here, so... Let's test it with our own. Pop. Hello? We're getting server lag. Let's try that again. Spawn. Oh, I took it out. <laughs> I took it out. I'm a fool. Okay, hang on. Let's try this again. Do, 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 do. There, you see, they'll 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 go in towards it. They're very, it's very funny. Uh, if I take this off, obviously these ones still won't attack me because they're um, mind controlled. Actually, hang on. Do you guys get confused if I hit myself? No. Better than the dogs. Um, Oh, he, he stole it. Okay, these zombies are really getting on my nerves. Stop stealing my stuff, man. I need that. So be careful. If you right-click them a second time, it will deactivate and break them. Um, <laughs> but uh, if there's a zombie nearby, they may acquire it. I'm going to need that back, my friend. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? That's valuable. Where'd you put the skull? Oh, come on. There's no way. Do you really not drop it? What a jerk. Unbelievable. Okay, so be very careful. Use your necromantic stone to get them away from the skull, I guess. Wow, that's remarkably annoying. Really not making a great case for using undead as minions, am I? Ugh. Alright, well, looks like it's gone. Much to my irritation. Oh well, I make mistakes so that you guys don't have to. Yay! To craft a replacement for it too. We we don't actually need an alluring skull for anything we're doing, but I thought it would be fun to have one. I guess I was wrong. All right, let's head back home. I'm gonna heal up. Then we're going to head on out. Okay. Woo. All right. Have we got everything? I'll check my checklist. Um, got the alluring skull, or at least I tried to. Uh, that's also, oh yeah, so it's only in my notes. That's a great, also a great way if you want to get gather them all in one place. Um, because it's very difficult to trade with uh, anything when it's all moving around. But the Alluring Skull will cause all of them to group up and stand more or less in the same position. Uh, so it's a great way to gather undead if you then want to trade with them for Spectral Dust and Gold. Got my brews. Alright, I got my soil. I got my, And I'm going to grab some chalk really quickly. Infernal chalk, specifically. I made some extra. I made a lot of extra, apparently. Okay. 
and let's go on a little trip. Got all my tools? Got all my tools. We're gonna fly up to the north. So I wanted to make a specific spot where I could prepare my undead army. Oh, actually, you know what I should do? Uh, I should build a, bring the supplies for building a gate. I'm gonna do that. Uh, because of course, what good is an army if you can't then unleash it on people? Obviously, we're not going to be the aggressors. We would never, we would never attack anyone unprovoked. But if I am going to make a staging ground for a potential future invasion, I'm going to want to do it properly. So let's see. I've got, where's my other chalk? Is it all in here? Okay, I've got gold chalk. I've got otherware. Uh, excuse the people driving around outside my house. Uh, and then we're going to need a little bit of obsidian. That, grab that into the air all right so as I was exploring looking for a place to to use as my staging ground I thought maybe use an island um, some place where the the undead would stay where they would be uh, you know not stuck so much as yeah actually well kind of stuck uh, and that was part of the plan for the alluring skull to prevent them from wandering off the island into the water uh, so I may build a few extra of those to put around and keep them in one place. Uh, but I wanted a good, a good spot to generate a bunch of undead to give them some armor so they could survive the sun and wait until they were needed. Uh, and I found the perfect spot, as you may have already guessed, of these two <laughs> landmarks we're flying towards. One of them has a much more necromancy-appropriate name. Welcome... To the maw. This island is going to be our staging ground if we ever go to war. Uh, and you may notice there's an interesting little dark spot there in the middle of the island. Uh, hello, folks. We have company. At least they're spawning here. Uh, let's fly down there. Pop off. And I can finally demonstrate the necromantic stone taking control of someone as they shoot me, which they are presumably about- oh no, right, I have the robes on. Hi. Uh, shift? Shift? Shift right? Is it shift right click? No? That doesn't seem to be working. What about you? Odd. Let me quickly search what is going on here and why that's not working. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, so I was incorrect. A necromantic stone cannot be used to control uh, natural undead, only undead that have been raised. So it's exclusively the ones that we create that we can uh, control. However, hey, 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 out, out of here. Leave. I'm using the wrong weapon, but it's still entertaining to watch you burn. Uh, however, with the Infernal Infusion, we now control you. Let's see. Yes, okay. So the Necromantic Stone cannot be used to mind control, but it will uh, direct any mind controlled undead. Oh, right. The sun. Yes, that. So, uh, if you have the Infernal Fusion like me, you can take control of natural undead and then control them with the Necromantic Stone, or you can just make them and then control the ones you made. Anyway, uh, this dark spot, the interesting thing, gonna descend into it for a moment uh, you can see we are not drowning and furthermore we have permanent weakness now I know what this is this is hollow tears it's one of two liquids that can be uh, brewed out of the essence of the spirit world um, here let's uh, 
flowing spirit. We've definitely done flowing spirit before on the channel. Uh, and it is, it can only be brewed in the spirit world. It is the pure magical essence of life. However, out of it, you can distill focused will and condensed fear, which are very powerful, but also hollow tears, the essence of death. It provides a lot of nice benefits to any undead that stand in it, um, strengthens them, heals them, all of that. And it weakens anything that's alive. So I find this lake with hollow tears bubbling up from inside it. Obviously the spirit world is leaking through somehow. Uh, this seems like a perfect place for our staging ground. As you can see, some of the, uh, the dirt around is already graveyard dirt. Uh, we are going to contribute to that with the stuff that we brought. You know, just uh, accelerate the decay of this island into an undead haven. What could go wrong? Pop that in. few more over here. Obviously, it'll be a bit of a long-term project to convert the whole island, but eventually this will be an absolute paradise for undead. Hollow tears, graveyard soil, uh, alluring skulls, everything. And this is where our army is going to live. I can uh, continue that process in a little bit. We are also going to ring the lake in chalk. See if perhaps this can uh, accelerate the process. Okay, and this is why I made a lot of chalk. It's a big lake. Uh, the island, it, I'm not sure if I want to call the island itself the mall or the lake. Specifically, I think the lake. I mean, look at it in the map. It's perfect. It's a great big hole in the middle of this, this uh, island just off the coast. So, but then we'll need a different name for the island. I don't know. Hey, get out of there. All right. It's a big lake. It's going to take a second. Ah, and I keep placing unnecessary ones with wastes chalk. Yeah, this island I think is is going to be one of my one of my first builds. I've I'm obviously not much of a a builder, uh, and I've only been playing Minecraft since the start of this SMP. But it's a nice opportunity to learn, especially since I'm using as a template the actual native world gen. So I'll just tweak this island, fancy it up. Um, while in the background, I continue some of my more uh, complicated builds, which you guys will obviously see eventually, um, as soon as, you know, I've finished them, which might take me a little while. And with that, we have closed our circle. The lake is surrounded. Now, one, uh, important, oh, actually, let's, let's build a gate. Let's build ourselves a gate. Where shall we place it? We want it to be somewhere that the undead can easily access. I think, hmm, over here looks pretty good. Relatively close to the center of the island. Could put it around that water over there. Actually, it, it, you know, putting, putting water in it is not a bad idea. Hmm. It's harder for them to, to get up, but there is also a very nice looking spot right here overlooking the lake. Uh, 
Oh, it looks perfect. It looks like it was designed for this. Maybe I'll save this decision for later. It's close enough for me to fly. I don't necessarily have to build a gate yet. But I can toss this in here with the chalk. Oh, and actually, while we're here, let's toss all of this in here, save ourselves a little bit of inventory space, and grab out the armor we're going to use. All right. Now for the final thing on my checklist for today, the last thing I would like to show off, the liquid brew of raising. So let's swap it out. And the reason this is much better than the splash brew is, as previously discussed, it continues, it lasts over time. Uh, and there is a, obviously, you can do this on a small scale. We're going to have it run down this hill right here. As you can see, the liquid travels down, and as time passes, undead spawn from it. Every tick, there's a, a chance for a few to spawn. Uh, these are all going to burn to death immediately because I forgot to wait until night, and eventually the liquid goes away. But a few of them will have spawned with helmets. Those ones will survive. And that's a lot of undead. So the liquid brew, compared to the two or three of a splash brew, this brew has just given us, I didn't even count, but 10, 20 more. And that was only lasting a little while going down a hill. What would happen if, for example, you flew up pretty close to the build limit and you cast the brew up there. So for my next trick, I am going to open a portal in the sky above the maw, and I'm going to dump an army of undead into it. Acasus. Here we go. And it will flow down. It won't spawn any until it reaches uh, a surface. Oh, there's some coming from the top. Here it comes. Let's see a few are, are dropping down into the into the tears, into the water. Ah, oh, here they come. And the brew is on its way. The magic is coming. And when it hits the water, they should spill forth. There they go. Protected by the, the lake itself, by the maw from burning. Oh, look how many there are. And this is from one cast. Look how little infusion power that cost. And look how many it makes. glorious. And then of course all I would have to do is grab my necromantic stone, highlight the center of a gate, and I would be able to draw them all over and teleport them wherever I want in the world from whence they can be commanded. Uh, let's grab the helmets. We'll put these on any that look particularly promising just in case they wander out of the water. Let's see. Do any of you, did any of you spawn with something enchanted? That would be a, a nice point in your favor. My flight makes it difficult to swim, ironically. Let's see. Oh, well, you already can't burn. So that's good. All right, the zombies are a little annoying, so I'm going to give the, the slack to the skeletons. Skeletons, oh, you have an enchanted one. Here you go. And you? Get over here. Put on the helmet. No, not, not like that. Oh, well, they're all about to attack it, I think. Or not. Interesting. I punched it, but they seem unperturbed. Let's see if I can get... There we go. Helmet on you. Helmet on you. And you. 
Now, mind-controlled mobs, to the best of my understanding, don't despawn natively, because uh, I've, like, mind-controlled a sheep at some point and then found it, like, months later still around in a random chunk that has, you know, that's that's been loaded and unloaded several times. Uh, so these should all hang out, except for the ones that burn to death in the sun because they're too stupid to stay in the water. Uh, which means any that we put armor on, specifically the helmet to prevent them from burning, should stick around for the foreseeable future. So here, let's also, let's dress you up. You can be the current leader. Uh, and obviously this is all a demonstration. I got booties on. Um, and when the time comes, we'll do a much more, you know, we can do this in a much more in-depth fashion. Uh, getting actually good armor, actually good weapons to throw down to, to them, um, spawning many more of them. But for now, I think this is a nice demonstration of the power of the brew of raising, specifically the liquid brew of raising. This is also something we can use uh, in an emergency without the need for, you know, all of this setup. Uh, you can always just throw it at a hill nearby. I should demonstrate what happens if you do it on a flat surface because it is not quite as impressive. There. It'll flow down the nearest hill. And there you go. That's not bad. We have a pretty... Oh, wow. Okay. I didn't pick a good enough spot to demonstrate this. Uh, but as you can see, it doesn't last very long. And if it doesn't get the chance to flow down a hill, it won't split. The chance to spawn happens in each block of the liquid. So if you... Hang on, let's go to an actually flat surface instead of the top of the hill. I don't know what I was thinking. And of course I spawned it on top of... I am useless. Ah! I'm, I'm having trouble demonstrating when it's bad. Um, as you can see, it does break the grass. So grass, plants, anything else like that. Why are you all stuck in the ground? Hmm. Uh, will be broken, so it's not entirely harmless to the surroundings. If you want one that really won't affect the surroundings at all, the answer is using a um, the splash potion that we made. But if you want quantity and you don't mind a little bit of grass being broken as they rise up to slaughter your enemies, the liquid brew of raising is absolutely the way to go. So, uh, welcome to the beginnings of our undead army. Every single one of these is friendly to us. And if something were to attack us, or if we were to attack something while well, here, for example, this zombie. They should attack it. Why are you not attacking it? Oh, I guess it has to damage me, doesn't it? No, I'm not going to risk the Carnosa DM. Having them all attack me would be a very bad idea. Um, if a, if a natural one spawned on here, is there one around or have I completely maxed the mob limit for this island already? I don't see one. There is this pig. Here. We'll attack the pig. The pig is not mind controlled by me, so they may see it if I attack it as a, a target. Oh, of course, I also have this off on. All right. Pig, will my minions attack you, or do I have to direct them myself? Go that way. Go towards them. No apparent threat. Good to know. Or, yeah, no, I guess not. How about if I use this? Or no, sorry, right click. Right click. Right click. There they go. And the army moves. <laughs> oh, that's terrifying. And of course, there might be casualties. They might accidentally hit each other, for example, and then kill each other and all of the things that, that undead normally do. But it is so incredibly easy to make more. And with that uh, cheerful thought, I think I will sign off for today. That's everything I had on my checklist for today. Uh, this is just a fraction of the things available with necromancy. You can also create uh, 
conjurations using something called a brazier. Uh, let's see. Yeah, using something called a brazier. Again, you see created by the, the necromantic stone. Uh, and these can do everything from uh, draining the life from crops to creating fog to infusing death energy into you to make you harder to kill. All sorts of neat stuff. Um, and most, perhaps most significantly, they allow you to summon spirits. So we've only done, you know, standard undead so far. But Witchery introduces a whole bunch of spectral undead who are extremely powerful and extremely interesting. So we are going to get to those as well. We're going to show how to bind them into spectral stones. So you can carry them around and in an emergency throw them down to, to burst out around you. Or how to bind them into effigies and fetishes and scarecrows and stuff in order to uh, create ongoing effects which is something we've done before I used a ghost walking fetish to beat uh, the shade of Leonard so this is stuff that we've we've discussed a little bit before on the server but we haven't done in depth we are now going to be doing it in depth and we are going to be doing it a lot so uh, with this uh, surrounded by my many children <laughs> I will sign off Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I had a great time, uh, and I am looking forward to the next round of Necromancy.